action is faster than reaction. So when the choice comes to shoot or don't shoot. Every time we go through the door, you know, it could be a potential shootout. That's why he makes them practice as if they're out on the streets of San Antonio, where they know a new crop of gang members and drug dealers is changing every day. They evolve. They learn from what they do, and they, unfortunately, they, they get better at what they do sometimes, and we have to just evolve, too, and, and, and grow with it. Do one more time, and then we'll bump it up to five guys. You know, keep up with the times and make sure we train that much harder. The training is necessary for this tight-knit group as they get closer to Enforcement Day for Operation Triple Beam Alliance with the support of the U.S. Marshal Service. The Marshal Service's model, the Operation Triple Beam, is really just coordinating all the expertise of different law enforcement agencies' anti-gang efforts at one specific target. If there's any other threats, <coughs> there's windows, he's got to punch across and take those. A multi-agency team led by SAPD's gang unit will serve warrants on alleged drug dealers and gang members that they've been investigating and now believe have been the leading cause of violence since late last year on the city's east side. We're going into their house. You know, they know what's in there. They know where their guns are. They know where their knives are. They know what they're, they, they already have a pre-plan when we do show up. So we got to go in there ready for anything. Furniture in here has a different purpose. Don't move! When you mix people and people who want to hurt us, and along with that, it's just, they're just obstacles that get in the way of us doing a safe job. Officer Ferguson is the only female on the gang unit. She says this training helps her feel ready for what's to come. We're putting these guys away. It is good for the community. Shooting an AR-15 or a shotgun. Oh. It's hard to imagine doing a drive-by and thinking you will only hit your target. It doesn't make sense if it's somebody doing a drive-by. There could be a kid standing there. From, you know, 25 yards, it's very deadly. You know, it's, it's a deadly gun, that's for sure. With more training under their belt, the gang unit has to serve some warrants before the last two days of the operation. Those are known as enforcement days. Anybody want to see it again? As officers get ready to serve a warrant, they admit that many things go through their head. Every time we're getting ready to go and we're in the van, I'm saying a prayer every time before I go. For the guys, for me, for everybody, just for everybody to be safe. Say a quick prayer and, and you know, have your peace with God and, and everything and you know, do what you got to do. Say a prayer to myself and uh, go. On Wyoming Street, the gang unit picks up one man. Terrence Black is already on probation for selling drugs. From there, officers then head to another home on the northeast side to serve a warrant. Here they find a bag with $17,000 in cash. They believe it belongs to the narcotics organization Black and Alvin Butler were operating. Anyone involved in the sales of illegal narcotics generates a, a great amount of money. But the gang unit doesn't always go in first for these warrants. Some warrants need a little extra help from another specialized unit. When we look at an individual's criminal history and we know that this guy has a history of violence or a history of weapons, then we go uh, to the SWAT team. That's what they're empowered for. That's what they're placed for. And so, you know, those guys train all the time. They're very good at what they do. And we give it to the guys that are best suited to do it. Doors to the home are reinforced on the inside, so for SAPD, this was the safest way to go in. Inside, Emmanuel Hemphill is arrested along with another man that was wanted for parole violations. His mother, Catherine Hemphill, was also charged and released on federal charges for being a part of the drug deal. For five months, 150 days. 3,600 hours. Some of those who were causing bloodshed and violence on the city's east side were under a more intense magnifying glass. There is going to be no way that they're going to escape. We're going to get them. SAPD's gang unit, with the help of their federal partners and the U.S. Marshals, knew that their intense investigation couldn't focus on what may seem to be the obvious problem. It wasn't so much related to any particular identified gang. So it's kind of drifted a little bit away from the actual gang on gang kind of thing. And they basically boiled down to, you know what, I just want to make 
money, quick, fast money, and that's the way to make it. Out here on Yvromfels, this is the way the street-level drug deals go down. Officer Mike Oliva says they're easy to spot. Sometimes it comes with a job, you know, it just... I guess on the job training, you can say it's intuition sometimes. Convenience stores seem to attract the most traffic. Look, look. There goes a kid in the white. You see that? Mm -hmm. Car pulls up, doesn't want no gas. Kid in the white goes over there. Guy in the white tank top reaching in his right front pocket. Look out. Look, he's going to go get the stash. The younger kid runs off and is believed to return with the dope. When the car takes off, officers in marked vehicles make the stop. Inside, they find a gun and a bag of bullets. But those selling out in front of convenience stores aren't the biggest problem. The illegal drugs, the sales of illegal drugs uh, occurring within the neighborhoods at certain homes has become very profitable for these individuals. As the gang unit detectives made their cases getting ready to wrap up the operation, uniform officers continued their daily duties. <laughs> Officer Sean Hernandez chased the suspect until he caught him. When he checked his name, he ended up being a wanted sex offender. We're going to execute an arrest warrant with the film warrant for evading. A simple stop for a broken taillight ended up in a chase. Inside the vehicle, they find pot. The passenger took off on foot. The driver was left with the goods and an upset mother. Unfortunately, I really believe that you have not been forthcoming with me. Oh, I'm a little disappointed. And if that's not enough, Fiesta is in full gear. From helping out at Hemisphere Park for the corn concert to the Tejano explosion at Cattleman Square. Although in the middle of a major operation, the unit still has to carry out other duties. We get back on point pretty quick, but when our services are needed elsewhere, uh, then we'll move those resources as quickly as possible. And Two nights before the end of the operation, the gang unit heads to Hay Street with the SWAT team. The house they will enter is believed to be a trap house where they've seen drugs being sold. Two men known to police, Juan Antonio Lozoya and Samuel Johnson, now face charges of conspiracy, maintaining a drug house, and distribution of narcotics. So this is enforcement day. We're now going to a separate location where they will be picking up someone on a warrant. We are not going to be able to get out of the vehicle so that we don't jeopardize anything that they will be doing for the next couple of days. Our first stop takes us to Corliss Street. We're very familiar with this area. We have done stories on 526 and 530 Corliss. I can't say that I think demolition is the answer. We were told back a few months ago that those orders were stopped by the councilwoman in charge of this area. Councilwoman Ivy Taylor told us last year that she asked for the demolition not to take place while her staff worked with the elderly owner. The man police were looking for, Lane Greenwich, was believed to be in one of these houses. And at the same time, all over town, teams led by the U.S. Marshals, Bear County Sheriff's Office, ATF, and the DEA were also picking up other warrants. At that moment, that day, when we're executing a warrant, when we're picking up an individual, we're all the same. We're all the same. After months of working on this operation, this is the last day, the last push to get the guys that are still out there with warrants. Today we're going to a man who claims to be one of the original members of the Wheatley Cords gang. Tyrone Adams is found at his home on Kenmar. Later in the afternoon, one of the last warrants is picked up. Devonshe Fisher is delivering a weapon. In his fancy red Mustang, officers managed to stop him right smack in the middle of a busy corner off Riddiman Road. Two homes that are a haven for crime were supposed to be demolished. We find out why they are still standing today right after the break. <laughs>